Hey, welcome back to this mini lecture. My name is Dino. Uh, more on fake news. This is a, another part of uh, some ideas, some thoughts, some reflections on David Laser's article, The Science of Fake News. Uh, here's, here's a quote from the article about 47% of Americans overall report getting news from social media often or sometimes with Facebook as by far the dominant source. Social media are key conduits for fake news sites. Indeed, Russia successfully manipulated all the major platforms during the 2016 U.S. election, according to recent congressional testimony. Um, what is the problem uh, about getting news from social media? And what do you think are the impact of foreign actors in domestic elections? Please maybe pause the video, think about it, and reflect. Any thoughts? Um, most simply, uh, for social media as platforms for news, they have less professional curation, if any at all. It's basically whatever the users uh, decide to share. Uh, you almost completely cut out any types of professional journalists helping out. As a result, there's less fact-checking, if any, and it's all left on the individual users who may have no background in fact-checking at all. As And also, if there are bad actors, there is really no, except for if you really violate um, and, you, and you go uh, um, just crazily online, it's hard to get kicked off of most social media platforms. So as a result, bad actors can get on and fair and share fake information, fake news. What is the impact of foreign actors in domestic elections? Uh, they can decrease lower trust by, uh, by creating uh, divisions uh, between people that may be more illusory than real. So they can amplify uh, some of the divisions that are already in society via, via a relatively un- moderated platform like social media. Are there any good news about all of this information that I've been sharing over the last several videos? Uh, uh, are there any thoughts for possible solutions? One would be algorithms. Uh, platforms can provide consumers with signals of source quality that could be incorporated into algorithmic rankings of content. As a result, better quality platforms can give these better signals, showing what's good and what's less good. Uh, they could also minimize the personalization of, of political information relative to other types of content. And this would reduce the creation of echo chambers, and that's smaller um, uh, groups of people who have the same political affiliation or other affiliations who just share in the same content and don't get as much of a balanced news or information diet. Number two, bots. Functions that emphasize uh, currently trending content can seek to reduce, to seek to exclude bot activity from measures of what is trending. As, re as a result, any types of uh, uh, distortions that bots could have could be minimized. Uh, also, more generally, the platforms can curb the automated spread of news contents by bots and cyborgs. Those are users who automatically share news from a set of sources with or without reading them. As a result, platforms could deal with uh, bots and help to uh, decrease uh, fake news on their sites. Also, uh, humans and education can help. We can, through media education and just general education, increase critical thinking by our students, increase digital literacy so we know what's real and not real online, and have a better idea of valid and less valid news sources, and increase digital, digital citizenship so that we kind of have an idea of what's going on in the digital world and also our our, our political spheres and in terms of citizenship so we can kind of combine uh, literacy, uh, the digital world, and more of the analog political world. And what are some next steps for society? I'm not saying we need to necessarily do these things, but some, some, some considerations. Uh, perhaps there could be some, some regulation by governments um, to push um, uh, platforms from purely being um, uh, engagement engines that drive engagement with less of a regard for high quality news sources. Uh, we can have, in terms of society, sort of more of a push in our schools and our communities to have more online civilities to sort of go beyond our fighting, try to reach out to people who we disagree with more, uh, more um, directly and more honestly, and hopefully that will help bridge some divides. And also, if we just have a better society as all, as all, that will almost invariably, if our society in an analog world is good, that will uh, invariably make a better on, uh, online society as well, and, and vice versa. Uh, so finally, some issues related to, and some considerations related to the Science of Fake News article. Uh, in terms of faith, there's a de decreasing faith in mass media. Uh, this has opened the doors for sharing and acceptance of fake news. So 
when when people don't have any faith in mass media, where do you turn to social media? And by social media, there's more fake news than in traditional mass media outlets that have professional journalists and fact checkers. Uh, there's a truth imbalance. Um, unfortunately, fake news is much more virile than truth. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Laser talks about it. I believe the spread is at least six times faster for fake news than real truth news. As a result, it's just going to overwhelm regular news. Geography. This contributes to polarization in the sense that when we come from big countries and a, a large world, people in different regions don't know each other so well. And this can these differences, this lack of information, this lack of knowledge among a different people can contribute to polarization. Uh, in terms of attitudes, these can boost the likelihood of accepting ideologically compatible news. So oftentimes, regardless of what your ideology is, we all have our own. You can define that any way you want. Um, we're most likely going to, if we, if we don't really think about it consciously, we'll more likely accept ideologically compatible news than incompatible news as a result at least to things like filter bubbles or, or and, and, and echo chambers that we are sort of increasingly surrounded by news that we like. Finally, familiarity. Uh, repeating false information may increase likelihood of acceptance as true, even if it's fact-checked. As a result, um, we really want to try to prevent uh, fake news from coming out. Otherwise, we're going to be in a world of trouble because when we try to fact-check it, that uh, repeating through the fact-check may, may in fact make the, the problem even worse. That was The Science of Fake News by Dave Laser. Uh, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like the video. Please feel free to, uh, to comment. D again, do you think fake news is real or not? Um, how do you think we, can, we should deal most, uh, most proactively with this issue? Should governments be involved? Do we leave it purely to people? Should we leave it purely to the platforms? Uh, th again, thanks for watching. Please feel free to comment. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like this content and want to see more. Take care.